and WSGW.com. A mostly sunny good morning to you. I hope your day is going well for you, wherever you might be. We're having ourselves a pretty good day today. It's a Tuesday, 23 degrees at the airport, 24 at Radio Center, downtown Midland at 25, downtown Bay City coming in at 24 degrees. The southeast breeze at 6, 30.54 and steady is the barometric pressure. We have a high pressure system to the south and east of us. That high is a pretty intense uh, system, and eventually what it's going to do is uh, draft quite a bit of warm air up into the uh, state of Michigan. But it is going to get a little bit of help, and we'll talk about that in just a second. For the most part, everyone all across the uh, lower peninsula is looking at temperatures anywhere from 20 to 25, 26 degrees. You get a little bit further north, and then things uh, cool down just a little bit. Pelston, this hour with sunshine, is talking 11 Harbor Springs is looking at 24, Charlevoix, or I should say 14, and Charlevoix is looking at 17. Then you get in the Upper Peninsula, uh, Ironwood is at 9, Iron Mountain is right now reporting 3 degrees with a calm breeze. As we go through the day today, we are going to be looking at a low pressure system, which is currently over the Dakotas. That low is going to be moving up uh, uh, over Lake Superior over the next 24 hours or so. And eventually, that will be drafting some warmer air up as well. That's why our high temperature today of 28, uh, we're going to back off just a little bit, maybe 2, 3 degrees, and then we're going to jump back up. So uh, I think by midnight, we very easily could be at 30, 32. And then going through the uh, pre-sunrise hours, after midnight, up until about 6, 7 o'clock, we're going to see that temperature gradually work its way up. So by sunrise tomorrow morning, we will be looking at temperatures close to 40 degrees. And along with that, a pretty good chance of rain showers because that low pressure system moving along through Lake Superior is going to be dragging a front. And that front is what's going to generate the rain shower activity and cooler air behind it which eventually is going to turn into freezing rain and snow. But it's going to take a while for all of that to uh, happen. Right now, what we're looking at is uh, filtered sun. We'll have a little bit more in the way of cloud cover later this afternoon. As I said, our high temperature will be uh, 28 degrees. We'll have a uh, south breeze tonight that is going to be picking up. Uh, as we go through the nighttime hours and early tomorrow morning, we'll have winds gusting close to 40 miles per hour. And along with that is not only going to come the clouds, but the cold front from the northwest to the southeast. But that's going to take until late tomorrow night before that front actually does move through. So during the day today or tomorrow, we're going to be looking at mostly cloudy skies, rain as the day goes on. And I think the best chance of rain shower activity is going to be after 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. 48 is going to be our projected high temperature. Some cities, though, will hit the 50-degree mark. And that's one of the reasons why 50 degrees and rain showers later in the afternoon and tomorrow night is the reason why they're looking at some flood watches and some uh, major issues as far as water is concerned. Barry, Calhoun, Clinton, Eaton, Gratiot, Ingham, Ionia, Jackson, Kalamazoo, Kent, Montcalm, Ottawa, and Van Buren. Uh, it looks as though uh, those areas, because they have as much snow as what they have, they are going to run into some melting issues. And as I said, a pretty good chance of seeing some major problems there when it comes to water. Again, the other problem is, is there's ice. So it's not like the water is just going to flow. There's going to be ice jams. So in that part of the state, for sure, they are going to be running into some issues. Then on Thursday, this is the day that is probably the most uncertain of any of them with the weather forecast. What appears to be is that after midnight on Wednesday night and early Thursday morning, whatever precipitation we get, and there is a very good chance of seeing 
some pretty heavy rain shower activity moved through uh, late Wednesday night and early Thursday morning. All of that's going to transition into some freezing precipitation. So the morning drive at sunrise could be real interesting because it could still be of the freezing rain or it could be the transitioning over into snow. But during the day on Thursday, it's going to turn out to be snow. And it does appear as though it's going to stick around for a good part, if not all, of the daylight hours on Thursday. So whatever snow we get, first of all, is going to be heavy wet. And whatever snow we do get is going to pile up. Uh, we've heard and seen projections of anywhere from 2 to 4, 3 to 5, 4 to 6. Uh, the latest uh, information I've been able to glean seems to me uh, to be in the Great Lakes Bay region, specifically Saginaw Bay City Midland, uh, at least four inches, uh, if not uh, up to six. But a lot is going to depend, again, on the speed of a low-pressure system, which is going to be moving up the front, coming from the uh, southwesterly direction and moving up, following the front as that front moves through the lower peninsula. So travel on Thursday is going to be an issue. If you do have to do some traveling, plan accordingly. Tomorrow shouldn't be an issue, shouldn't be a problem at all. It's going to be a rainy day, especially later in the afternoon and the evening hours. More on the weather as we go through the broadcast. We're going to touch base on the markets in just a moment. Rick Hollister with the Andersons will be joining us. But before we do that, we want to remind you the weather forecast brought to you by the folks at Nutrient Ag Solutions. Nutrient Ag Solutions has the local expertise to recommend the corn, soybean, and other seed products that are the best fit for your field. Plus, unparalleled agronomic support with products and services to unlock yield potential and improve crop performance from planting to harvest. Ask about our financing options to help you get more from every acre and lead the field. Visit your local Nutrient Ag Solutions branch or go to NutrientAgSolutions.com. They say there's a secret to growing a great crop. At Nutrient Ag Solutions, they beg to differ. It all starts with a strong foundation, and when it comes to fertilizer, there's no question that Titan XE drives dry fertilizer performance. They've been unlocking the potential in every prill of dry fertilizer with BioCatalyst technology for over a decade. Visit lpi.ag Titan or contact your Nutrient Ag Solutions crop consultant to drive your crop's potential today. Farm service brought to you today by the folks at Wiki Crop. You know, you can farm this year with confidence, Mr. Farmer. Confident in knowing that Wiki Crop insurance is available when you need them. If you're the recipient of an FSA WIP Plus program, remember, as a condition of payment eligibility, you will need to obtain crop insurance on your crop paid under the WIP Plus program. So now's the time to get a hold of Kyle and get all the details. 989-284-9975 or visit wikicrop.com. The deadline for crop insurance is going to come around faster than you think. So contact Kyle today. We say good morning to Rick Hollister over at the Andersons. Rick, uh, the wild and woolly markets continue, huh? <laughs> we are uh, really on a roller coaster here, Terry. Uh, even intraday, uh, just real uh, wild swings uh, yesterday, uh, today as well. Um, soybeans were down uh, more than 20. At the moment, we have soybeans down eight cents. Uh, soybean oil is uh, was sharply lower. Now it's just down 25 points. So uh, rallying back on that side, wheat and corn still lower. Corn at the moment uh, is down 15 cents from yesterday's close. Uh, wheat is uh, down 19 to 20 and just kind of hanging there. But uh, the, the volatility uh, today is uh, comes from the uh, idea that Russia is pulling back some troops. Uh, from the Ukrainian border. Um, not sure we've seen really great confirmation of that, but uh, but that's the idea today that uh, Russia's de-escalating the, the tension there. Uh, crude oil is down sharply, down four to 450 a barrel. Uh, in the West, West Texas crude, the March futures are. Uh, gold's down sharply, silver down hard. So soybeans and, and corn and wheat go with it, Terry. Um, we, we do have also adding to it uh, a little bit of a forecast uh, change for South America, for especially for Argentina. 
uh, this week is going to be uh, hot and dry. The seven, seven to ten day is hot and dry. You know, they're in their growing season now on soybeans, so a potential impact there. But the 11 to 15 day, which we want to cite today uh, for soybeans, is is a little wetter and a little cooler. So it looks like the, the weather roller coaster in South America continues also. So that just has us all kind of whipsawed back and forth here. Uh, hot and dry nearby uh, for Argentina, but uh, but rain and cooler temperatures out in the farther forecast, the 11 to 15. So uh, not that the 11 to 15 days are terribly accurate, as you well know, uh, but uh, that's what the market, uh, the excuse sheet at least today, uh, has that rain out there uh, in, in the forecast. So right now on the board, what do you have at the Andersons? At Hemlock at the moment, uh, corn is 5.99. So we've we've slipped just below for February delivery, just below the six dollar mark at 5.99. New crop corn is at 5.38. Uh, soybeans for February at 15.13. New crop beans at 13 dollars and 73 cents. New crop red wheat at 7.33, and new crop white wheat at 7.38. All right, you have a great day, Rick. Thank you so much. Thanks, Terry. Check in with you next week. All right. Rick Hollister over at the Andersons. A little bit more in depth. Doug Klein from Oppenheimer joining me right now. The market report brought to you by Quality Roasting of Reese, offering competitive, consistent prices for your soybeans. So give them a call for a quote today. And by Foster Blue Water Oil. They are taking your diesel to another level. More power cleaner injectors, faster cold starts, maximum lubricity, year-round protection, and up to 8% improved fuel economy with Diesel Guard Supreme Plus from Valve Tech Petroleum. Just give them a call today at Foster Blue Water Oil or go online, fosterbluewateroil.com. Doug, what do we have today? Well, I think Putin did all of this just to make a little bit of money. You think? Run the markets up, bet against them, run the markets down, you know. Yep. Jeepers. There you go. All about the narrative. But anyway, yeah, so crude oil is down about three and a half bucks today. That's almost 4%. Um, Same with uh, diesel fuel, natural uh, gasoline. Natural gas is up a little bit. Uh, The dollar's down, which is kind of counterintuitive once again. Uh, Precious metals all down. I heard that uh, the Bitcoin, the the, uh, cryptocurrencies were up one or one or one and a half percent, something like that. Uh, the producer price index came to came in today, and it was pretty hot, nine uh, percent something year over year, something like that. Six point six maybe on the core producer price index. So it's like I said, pretty hot. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure the Fed's going to raise by a quarter, but uh, the market might still be thinking a half in March. So we'll see how that plays out. But anyway, here's your numbers. The March corn, 640 and three quarters, down 15 cents. December corn, 590 and a quarter, down 8 cents. March soybeans, 1563 and three quarters, down 6 and a quarter. The July soybeans, 1566 and a quarter, down 5 and three quarters. Uh, March wheat, 782 and a half, down 16 and three quarters. And December wheat is 788 and three quarters, down 15 and three quarters. Crude oil is 90.03, down $3.47. And I looked up support on crude oil just to see what parameters we're dealing with, because that's really all the traders care about, Putin. Um, so it's like 82 on the short term support, and then 72, and then beyond that, it, it won't go there. But, but uh, so, I mean, if you're a player like Putin, you might be looking at 84 for for a chance to jump in for a little bounce. But uh, as of right now, we're kind of in profit-taking mode. It might last a day or two. We'll see. Uh, heating oil is 275.64. That's down nine and a half cents. Gasoline 267.38, down ten and a half cents. Natural gas is 426 and three quarters. That's up 7.8 cents. Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar gets you dollar 27.46 at the border. That's up 18 ticks. The yen is at 115.69, that's up 16 ticks. The euro is at 113.61, that's up 56 ticks. The dollar's at 95.97, down 40 ticks. Gold's at 18.48, down 20 bucks. Silver's at 23.28, down 56 cents. And platinum kind of snoozing, 10.26.50, that's down a 
buck fifty. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how much of a gambler Putin is, uh, but yeah. he's he's got a pretty good poker face, wouldn't you think? Uh, he's got a great poker face, and he, by the way, has one huge chunk of change. I you know, had that funny he's feeling. One of the darn richest men in the world. Yep. He's loaded. Yep. <laughs> I hear you. Talk, mm. talk to you later, Doug. Okay, yep. Yeah. Doug Klein over at Oppenheimer. Joining me right now, Jerry Samalski, Bay Landscaping and Garden Center in Essexville. Uh, Jerry, we got some sun. Boy, I, I want to go out and do something. <laughs> yeah, Terry. Um, you know, right now is uh, when I, if I had big oak trees in my yard. I'd look at calling a tree trimmer, an arborist, to come in and get those trees trimmed. Um, now is the time we want to do it. You know, there's not a lot of snow on the ground. The ground's frozen. They could probably drive their equipment right across your lawn and not create a whole lot of, of uh, problems. So uh, a lot of people talk about, you know, well, that tree always drops mess. It's always dropping something. Well, if you have someone come in and trim all that stuff out that's going to drop in the next three years today, it won't drop. So, you know, again, if you can, now with uh, oak wilt is the time that you want to be trimming trees and get all that stuff that drops out of the air out now. I'd look at trimming oak trees, Terry. No, don't do it tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jerry, take care. All right. Jerry Samalski, Bay Landscaping and Garden Center in Essexville. Just this reminder, a couple of meetings coming up next week that you should be aware of. One of them, uh, the Sugar Beet Advancement and Michigan Bean Commission's Beet and Bean Symposium. It's going to be next Tuesday, February the 22nd at the Doubletree in Bay City. And then on Wednesday, the 23rd, the Michigan Wheat Growers, uh, the Michigan Wheat Program is having their annual meeting a little bit earlier than normal, but uh, their meeting is going to be a week from tomorrow and it'll be over at the Eagle Eye Conference Center. Along with me, Chuck Lipstrew with the Michigan Agribusiness Association. Morning, Chuck. How are you? Well, I'm just fine, Terry. How are you? Hey, we're doing pretty good. We're talking about some meetings. There's a lot of activities going on. And uh, I had the opportunity to talk to, uh, um, couple of folks this morning on coffee with corn we were talking about uh, uh, issues as far as getting uh, supplies in uh, the herbicides uh, farmers having to deal with other things and of course uh, you and I the last time we talked we talked about all the issues with the ambassador bridge it appears as though uh, that has come out fairly clean what else should we be looking at right now well you just covered a couple of them and you also before i came on i think just mentioned two really important meetings coming up next week you know i know everybody knows this but highly encourage folks to head over to bean and beat day next tuesday that's always a great meeting uh, and the wheat growers always put on a good meeting as well um you know i, I we talked about this up at at uh soaring eagle here a, a couple of weeks ago with the corn growers and and others uh, there at the Great Lakes Crop Summit, the, you know, as we continue to navigate the uncertain supply situation, communication, 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 make sure you're reaching out to your retailer, uh, make sure you've got that open line of communication. Uh, you know, obviously, we saw the news here from Bayer on Monday um, on, on glyphosate supply. Uh, there's continuing volatility in, in fertilizer markets. Uh, you know, I think everybody was, you all were just talking about you know how global events are are uh, going to impact some of the um, some of the ag markets potentially, uh, depending on what happens in the next you know, 24 to 96 hours. Um, this is a good time to be talking to everybody, uh, and you know, make sure you've got uh, your retailer and uh, your banker and everybody else on speed dial, and that you're talking to them because this is uh, this is unprecedented territory. Um, uh, one thing I do want to mention, Terry, that's additional news. Uh, we've got uh, good news in the U.S. Senate. Um, an effort called the Ocean Shipping Reform Act to pass the House on a bipartisan basis got uh, introduced, reintroduced in the Senate last week by a bipartisan group of senators. That is a really important bill to clear up some of the unfair trade practices that our ocean shipper friends are engaged in uh, that, that's holding up containers from making their way to Michigan and elsewhere in the supply chain. So you'll see us talking about that here the next couple of weeks, and that's one uh, again, that's bipartisan that we can all get behind. Uh, and our farm groups and agribusiness organizations here in Michigan have, have done a great job to come out and support that bill. 
good information. Chuck, you take care. Have a great day, okay? Thank you, sir. You bet. Chuck Lipstrew with the Michigan Agribusiness Association. Craig Voorhees with the Rummel Agency in a moment. Sometimes I think I sound like a broken record. Hi, I'm Steve Cook from Cook's Chevrolet Buick and Bassett. For a few months at the Cook GM Superstore, we've been telling you how lucky you are if you qualify for the GM Employee Retiree Family Member Discount. But with all the inflation talk all over the news, I feel obligated to keep reminding you that with the GM Discount, you are paying full sticker for as much as 10000 over sticker for a new vehicle, like you're hearing on the national news. With the GM Discount, you buy below dealer invoice, just like you did for the last 30 years. At Cook Chevrolet, you'll find Silverado starting as low as $299. And Blazers as low as two forty-five. We now have two hundred vehicles arriving or getting built. Reserve yours today. That's the Cook GM Superstore M15 Top of the Hill in Bass. Payments based on GM employee and family lease, ten thousand miles per year, and includes all rebates. Twenty-eight forty-four on Blazer, twenty-eight eighty-nine on Silverado. Do it signing. Call toll free or visit us online at cookchevybuick.com. Chevy, find new roads. Farm Service brought to you today by the folks at Steiner Tractor Parts. New parts for old tractors yeah, made easy. 800-234-3280 or go to their website, steinertractor.com. Craig Voorhees, I think our topic is uh, right on point today. Let's talk a little bit about flood. Yes, Terry, as you mentioned earlier, we we're going to have some melting snow. We're going to have rain and all that water needs a place to go. Unfortunately, we're too late to do flood insurance for those areas under advisories the next couple days because flood insurance does carry a waiting period. So if you're in an area that's prone to flooding, especially you know coming up in the spring here, make sure you're talking to your agent now so that you can get your policy put in place. The waiting period will expire, hopefully before you actually need the policy. A lot of folks don't realize that there is a a, a holding period before that coverage kicks in. Do you have to be in a floodplain to get flood insurance? Not necessarily, but most of the folks that carry it or buy it are the ones that are typically in those areas. You know, we, we get the occasional 30 or 40 year floods and most of the time you don't carry it. But if you're in an area that's regularly prone to it, it's a good idea to pick it up. Craig, thank you very much. It's a good reminder. Obviously, tomorrow is going to be wet, but uh, hey, we've got spring coming up and anything can happen. We all know that. You take care, all right? Thanks, Terry. You too. You bet. Craig Voorhees with the Rummel Agency. Let's find out what the folks in New York are doing to us right now. Steve Anderson over at Baird & Company joining me this morning. What's on the board right now, Steve? Well, actually, they're doing for us today, not to us. We have the Dow Jones Industrial Average is at 34,981. That's up 417 points. Volume is 333 million shares. The NASDAQ is up 289 at 14,081. And that's on volume of 346 million shares. Locally, mostly green. Uh, Caterpillar, 203,71, up 382. Deer, 394,73, up 747. CMS 6220 down 19, Dow 6165 up 82, DuPont 8120 up 188, Cortiva 5101 up 11, GM 4940 up 1, Trinzio 5719 up 91, Walmart is 134.61 up 66, Home Depot 354.36 up 280, Huntington Bank is 16.05 up 35, and AT and T is up a quarter at 24.30. And when I said that GM was up one, I meant one dollar, not one penny. So mm. nice little jump there. Certainly a lot more than a penny. You take care. Yes, it is. I will. You do the same. I'll try to keep all this green here with us today. Ah, you're a good man. Steve Anderson over at Baird & Company. Michigan producers of sweet and tart cherries have an opportunity to vote on whether to continue the cherry promotion and development program in a referendum that is being conducted by the Department of Agriculture here in the state. Now, the referendum has started, and it runs through February the 18th. 
the ballots were sent out on January the 31st. So if uh, you've got the ballot and you just haven't done it yet, Mr. Cherry Grower, might be a very good idea to get it done because that's got to be postmarked by uh, February the 18th. Um, right now, producers are eligible to vote if they produce cherries valued at more than $800 at first point of sale in any of the past three years. So for more information, again, if you did not get a ballot, might be a very good idea to uh, contact the Department of Agriculture, Michigan Department of Agriculture, uh, at their 800 number. We'll be back at 1230 with an update, so you stick around. But now we conclude our program with a playing of our national anthem. The premier kitchen and bath gallery studios, WSGW, Saginaw, Bay City, Midland, WSGW FM, Carlton. This is CBS News on the Hour, sponsored by Rocket Mortgage. I'm Steve Kathan. Two major legal settlements in Connecticut. Word of a $73 million deal is 